welcome back to another episode of 30 Minutes with the Modern Mystic. It's been a while. No, we have not divorced. No, we have not <laughs> broken up. There has been no argument. It's just been life. But life also moved Sasha from Germany to Florida in the States, and that took a bit of doing. And so we gave him space to do it. And here we are again. The beautiful topic of today is joy and the pursuit of happiness. Which is interesting because the pursuit of happiness will seldom ever bring you joy. Um, joy, to me, arises from the soul. Joy is a, um, it's an inner, it holds hands with inner peace. It's sort of bubbly. It doesn't really put a smile on your face and it doesn't make you look walk around looking like an effervescent drink that is overflowing from the glass. It, um, but it's there inside and uh, it does ignite a sense of humour where you can see humour in a lot that other people don't. But it's a, it's a beautiful state of being. It doesn't go away. It's not dependent on what's outside of you. It's not dependent on what television uh, movie you're watching or what book you're reading. It's just to do with the joy of being, the joy of living, the joy of the moment, the joy of being conscious. And, uh, and I, I suspect that it's not very common. Uh, the most common joy is people's names. Would you say that... <laughs> Joy automatically produces happiness? No, I wouldn't. Um, it would probably be that you are happy to have, to be, to experience joy. You're happy, but the pursuit of happiness, like, uh, is all, is very, holds hands with the pursuit of pleasure. You know, a lot of people pursue pleasure. I enjoy watching a movie. I admit I never go to the movies anymore because it's, an average screen being is big enough that you're not far away from it and it's just as good. But a lot of people wouldn't agree with that. I sort of find as I'm getting older that the thrill of the movie gets less and less and the thrill of living gets more and more. And, uh, and I like it that way. And so I enjoy movies and that gives me pleasure. But does that actually make me happy? Probably not, but it doesn't make me unhappy. But on the other hand, when I go out in the garden and the wind is not blowing a gale and I'm not likely to be decapitated by a falling branch, then out in the garden, I'm invariably happy and I'm not pursuing it. It's, I'm happy because I'm doing something I enjoy doing. How so would you joy, so uh, joy and happiness have a connection because if you enjoy what you're doing, it makes you happy. Would but, you... Uh, how would you define happiness compared to your definition of joy that you just gave in the beginning? I would say, I would say to create between them a comparison, whereas, whereas joy is in the depths of life and on, 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 on a soul level, happiness is on the surface of life and uh, much more on a personal level. So if you're floating in the sea, in an ocean of life um, and you're just floating on the surface and the sun is shining and you're, you've got plenty of fresh water and food and there are no sharks, then you can be quite happy just floating around. But joy is when you've got the scuba on and you dive deep and you're looking, at, you're having experience that is very rare and you realize, wow, not many people see this type of coral. And that's joy, you know, as a superficial sort of measure of the two. So joy is something you can't pursue. Um, if you, if, let's put it this way also. The intellect can be happy. You know, you're reading a book and that makes you happy, a nice book. Um, you're doing things like that. But the intellect has no, never will know what joy is because it's deeper than the intellect, but it, but intelligence, which is consciousness, feels the joy, and intelligence is aware of the joy, 
and um, the soul is aware of the joy and soul and intelligence have a very strong connection a, in a conscious connection whereas happiness in all this you know if you if you are seeking pleasure and you're enjoying something then you're pretty happy and so ha happiness i think is very valuable to the human to us humans we need we need to be happy and happiness allows us to have the first glimpse of what joy could be and although today all the words muddle up and our language is our language which is losing words at an alarming rate as far, even though as fast as we're getting new words, the language is still getting shorter and shorter. Um, we're less and less able to describe these deeper states of being. Like when I write my books, a lot of people say, why do you use long words? And they, I say, give me an example. And they tell me a word that to me is an everyday word. And I say, God, you mean that's gone out of your vocabulary? I've said it before, Shakespeare's time, there was about um, 7,000 um, words in everyday use for the educated people were now dropping down below 1,700. And that's a big, that's a big um, gap. And OK, we don't need all those words that they had because they had a lot to say about nothing. You know, one of the plays, much to do about nothing. Well, there's a lot of words about nothing. But it is nice when you have words that you can um, use to describe something like happiness. Like the other day, a couple of times recently, I put a Facebook entry and I really wasn't concerned what I wrote. I was enjoying playing with words. I was enjoying creating a rich, full um, paragraph that you could sort of read it and you could, it was like putting a nice thick layer of butter on a piece of toast and then you added the marmalade and as you ate it, that was the paragraph. And uh, I know that sounds crazy to you, but it isn't to me. Now that makes me happy. Yeah, no, it doesn't sound really... crazy to me at all. Um, would you, would you agree? Would you agree if I said that joy is something that arises within us when we reconnect yes, when we when we reconnect with our true self it arises yeah. is nothing we can you know like you said nothing we pursue and then i thought you, i thought you were going to say when we least expect it also and yes i, I agree. also possibly yep um yeah. and then happiness the way that i uh sometimes see it happiness and unhappiness or happy states and unhappy states in life are kind of like the waves on the surface. But if you're connected with that deeper joy, you can find joy or you can find happiness in both of those states of the wave. Yeah. Well, I'll ask you, what gives you joy? Personally, um, and see, that's that's an interesting thing. Like if you, if you say gives you joy, that's a different yeah. uh, phrase than yeah. like, what makes you happy, right? And that that's like an interesting detail there. If if we say it brings me joy or I thoroughly enjoy doing this compared to this makes me happy. And maybe yeah. for maybe for many people it's kind of the same thing, but I feel there's a little difference. If I feel yeah, like when I say what gives you joy, I I could say what brings you joy. I agree. I mean it's a it's an interesting Phrase, isn't it? Because I definitely what gives you happy. Yeah, because I definitely say, because you I don't say you happiness. You say what makes you happy. What makes you happy? Yep. Because I would definitely agree that um, joy or enjoying something always, like in the deeper sense or in the real sense, has something to do, at least for me, with uh, something pertinent, something spiritually pertinent, something. Uh, deeply fulfilling whereas uh, if I say oh, this really makes me happy it could I mean I could enjoy a good meal I could, I could say I enjoy this meal really um, but then again I think we really like in everyday usage we we mix these things up I think we most 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 of us don't have that distinction between joy and happiness very present in our everyday usage 
I agree. I mean, like this um, cup of strong, hot, smoky tea, um, it sort of makes me happy because this is a thermal cup, so I can wrap my hands around it and it keeps them warm without burning. And all that makes me happy. But does it bring me joy? Not at all. But definitely when you, I agree with you, it, when you, it's difficult to have joy without a spiritual link. It's because it goes deeper. It's on a soul level. It's a much, much deeper. It's like a, like the diver. You've got to dive for it. And if you dive for it, you'll never find it. Also, I find the mind, the mind says, I want joy. And it's never going to get it any more than the intellect. So it's something that that is the mind can't grab hold of. Ha ha, this is it. I've got you. Joy, I'm not letting you go anymore. It can't do that. It, it, it can be an observer, as the intellect can, of your inner joy. But it can't say, I know what that is. Because, it's, because it wants it. And, and you can't want joy. The moment you want joy, you're pushing it away from you. Whereas you can want to be happiness. You can want to be happy, because many people do. Enough songs about it. And for most people, the, the way is through pleasure seeking. What is lovely is when you find the place in life that what you most enjoy doing is what you can do every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's I, I mean, I enjoy being online. I enjoy communicating with people. I like to feel, I enjoy the feeling that um, maybe I'm contributing to something to the lives of quite a number of people. And although there are many people who contribute far more than me to far more than people, the ocean is made up of the drops and every drop is as important. And that sort of makes me smile and gives me pleasure, which makes me happy. It's easy, and they see makes me happy. Yeah, it's kind um, of interesting how how pleasure, joy, and happiness have, I think, for most people, become kind of the same thing, or they they yeah. would use them interchangeably. Um, yeah. But I guess yeah, somebody uh, laying in bed with COVID, and you said, "Are you happy?" <laughs> They wouldn't say, well, I can still breathe. And although my legs and arms ache and my shoulders and I got a headache, hey, it's not going to kill me. So, yes, no, they wouldn't go that and way. I, I think another word we could throw in the mix uh, from a more esoteric or spiritual background is the word bliss, which uh, comes to mind when thinking of joy. And I, th and I think there is this strong connection between that deep joy that dwells in all of us, which kind of brings us into this blissful state. No matter if we uh, are in an unhappy situation where somebody's threatening us, or if we are having a great meal, or if we live in a, a difficult situation right now, but there's still that place under all of this madness um, that kind of keeps you in that blissful state. And the yeah. and, and I think the ironic thing for me, at least, is that with this idea of the pursuit of happiness, we are pursuing something which brings us, drives us further and further away from where we should be going. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I never, you notice, I never use the word bliss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not your vocabulary so much. It's, and because I guess I grew up with a, an English saying that had a quite impress on me, impression, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> And, and I used to often think about that as a teenager. So if I don't know something, then I'm blissfully ignorant. And I, I, I sort of connected the word blissfully ignorant, as many people are, rather than blissfully peaceful, mm -hmm. blissfully loving. And, uh, and also, <laughs> this will make you laugh, when I was young, we had radio, no television, I didn't really see, we didn't have a television in our house till I was 15. And as I look back, I'm very grateful. But so with, with radio, you had to use your imagination. And one of the things I used to love watch, listening to every week was um, A Life of Bliss. And here we are, folks, another day in the life of David Alexandra Bliss. And he had a, he had a girlfriend, Zoe, who had a voice like honey pouring over syrup, and you could just imagine how sexy she was 
when I once saw a photograph of her, I was horribly disillusioned. But anyway, Zoe, um, so David Alexander Bliss was quite a uh, quite a chump. And so I'd, I'd never learned to associate bliss with inner peace and joy. And it's interesting how our childhood puts us in a direction that we don't realize we've gone. And when you said bliss, instantly, David Alexandra came back, bliss, and um, ignorance is bliss. And really, I can see what that means as saying, but really, um, it is a state of bliss to feel that joy. But it's a, it's a different connotation to bliss altogether than the one I grew up with. It's horrible, isn't it? How something like those two innocent things as a child can steer you in a direction that uh, of, takes you away from a deeper meaning of a word. That sort of surprises me. And I guess we, we can have those deeply instilled experiences as children and then they remain with us and then they're connected to those semantic clouds of words and then we never want to touch them again. I, I guess in the Indian spiritual world or literature, bliss is very often used um, as one of the main aspects of creation. You know, they always talk about wisdom, bliss and love being interconnected, you know. Hmm, amazing. I never made that connection. Yeah, yesterday, yeah. Yesterday, in a way, for me, I I went up to a friend's home. I left Carolyn here um, because she was busy. And I went to a friend's home and we had a room about the size of two bedrooms. And we had this area that we I want we were going to he, they were going to landscape. And I said I'd love to have some input, and they were delighted to have it. And in the middle of it, we put a round jacuzzi, which was sunk, of course, and going to be a pond. Now, over here, we have a problem with cane toads, and they will get in the pond and lay eggs, and they lay strings of eggs, and if the fish eat them, they're toxic from the moment they're eggs. And when they're tadpoles, the fish eat them, they kill fish, the wow. eggs will kill fish, the tadpoles will kill fish, and then the baby toads will kill anything that eats it. And so you keep them out your pond, and so we raise it up anyway. And um, we did all this and placing plants and uh, standing back and look at it. And I was in bliss. I mean, that would be my state. I just so enjoyed it. And I looked at the, when we started, um, about half past nine. And, and then next thing I know, it's half past 12. And how about we go and have lunch? And we're just about finished. And I thought, my God, when you're in this, when you're in the, having so much fun, time's gone like that. You're sitting in a waiting room have your tooth pulled and it's like three minutes it's like uh, or hour it's like pew and you're there you've got to do it it doesn't hang but uh i think bliss also or that joyful blissful state that we're talking about uh, doesn't exist uh in linear time it's something that arises in that's an interest that's an interesting point sasha that's a good point this is why we do this I wouldn't have thought of that because joy is definitely so far out of linear time. There's nothing to do with it. I think you uh, don't my... have, with happiness and pleasure, you have to maintain it. Take away the pleasure and the happiness has just gone. Right. And it's always uh, just a moment. We, we all know it like you, you, you want something, you get it and it's gone. You're looking for the next thing. Very much, very much dependent on the intellect, the brain, the wants, and, the, and being met, all of that. The joy just bubbles away, and it's certainly not linear. It just bubbles away like a little fountain. And then it's wonderful to realize one day that you are the fountain, and you are the source of the water in the fountain. But that water is connected with the fountain of water is connected with the all. So you're the one in the all. And just that really feeling you know, one in the all and the all in the one. For me, that gives me an incredible sense of joy. Somebody else might say, huh? <laughs> but for I, me, I that's... like uh, metaphorically, it might be that joy and bliss flow into your being if your energy bodies are in sync. And for most of us, most of the time, they are out of sync, so it can't really flow into it. But if we bring them into sync, 
then there's like a flow of energy through us and that's bliss that's joy that's maybe the... i suspect that life itself and life is not an outside of self event and so when you look at self as being a field of energy that connects with the all and and that and if that therefore connects with the world it connects with the universe because it's a holographic universe and you can't be in the one without being in the all like if you get a leaf and the hollow take a holographic shot of it um each cell holds the whole leaf and each leaf holds out all the cells and so when you realize it's a holographic universe the um there's that connection and that connection uh, well is life where everything connects and it's conscious and life is different if you're living subconsciously and when you get a 94% of people are living probably subconsciously which is why we're going through what we're going through because it really doesn't work then how can you there's no such thing as subconscious joy joy you know we're used to subconsciously breathing and in fact I think people should be a bit more conscious of it and take a bit deeper breathing but we're used to subconsciously the heart keep the body the subconscious is run by the autonomous system which um, the subconscious runs out so the body runs but joy is something that comes from being conscious being being aware being uh, in fact it is life and you're feeling life in you and you are life and you realize when you look out through your eyes it it's a sense of humor seeing this is lovely what I'm seeing, but it's not real. It's only real in as much as my, the mind gives it reality that aligns with everybody else's. And, and, uh, and when you realize you're looking at the scene around you, and there are so many dimensions there you can't see physically, but metaphysically you can see many of them. I've been resuming my book lately. I'm really into it, Pan and Me. And um, it's, it's, it's really giving me some surprises. It's, it's going completely different direction than I ever intended. And I'm allowing it. I'm going with it. And uh, it's like another education. And, um, but I'm not ready to talk about it. You know, when, um, let's, conversation. let's use those last eight minutes um, in a way to, to uh, maybe address what, what one can do if you're if you find yourself in a situation where you realize that you're constantly pursuing happiness but you're constantly being a, a, a disappointed so you're aware of that and what could be a good way of turning things around and going inwardly towards that place where joy arises for me that's fairly simple i think if you if you can gradually move your life in a direction where you let go of wants, that doesn't mean, therefore, there's no wanting you know, in your life, but you let go of wants and begin to embrace needs. I've found that when you focus on needs, they're met. Um, when you focus on what, you're on a forever drive away from running. happiness, away from joy, and so I think letting go of wants would be the greatest turnaround to moving toward happiness, wanting pleasure, allow, allow yourself to find pleasure in the small things of life. You know, like behind me, there's um, Uluru. Now, a lot of people used to walk up it and the Aboriginals didn't like it because that's sacred to them. And, but they got pleasure out of walking up it. On the other hand, I'm not sure Uluru liked being walked up. And I know in, in the 1980s, um, over 70 people had dropped dead walking up it wow. from heart attacks because they weren't fit. Um, okay. As you can see, there's quite a slope. There's quite a slope. Sure. Yeah. And they just... They had heart attacks. I'm not saying everyone died, but a lot did. And uh, and so often, why did they need to walk up there? Today you can't, it's, it's banned. The Aboriginals have finally got it banned because that's theirs. 
And, um, and so some people get pleasure in doing things they shouldn't do, but that will never lead toward real happiness and it will never re lead toward joy. Some people get pleasure out of scamming other people and they live like parasites, but that will never take them toward happiness. Or they might laugh, but each scam happy. Laughter can have evil and, and, and um, heaviness behind it, just the same as it can have fun and pleasure behind it. And you've frozen, and I, well, you can hear me at all. Yeah. Oh, there I'll you are again. Going. Your video was frozen for a moment. Yeah, well, yours was for me. I, I guess what it requires is that moment where you realize that all of this stuff is a never-ending cycle. It's... Well, and that's there, life. There needs to be an, a moment of awareness. There's like, hold on a moment. That doesn't bring me, take me anywhere. Yeah, well, then there isn't a moment because there's only the eternal now. And people chop it up into moment by moment. And you realize that intellectually, they haven't a clue what the eternal now is. It's moment by moment. And that's fair enough. We've got to grow. But I do find that... Uh, that when you're in that eternal moment, joy is there with you. But just having an awareness, just being conscious, is is it brings joy. Um, and I've always said to people that, you know, whether they say, what is the art of life? Just be conscious. Just be conscious. Then you might even know what life is. Because for us, life ends. And they call that ending death. The only and it's difficulty never is... It never will. The only difficulty is that that journey towards being conscious is completely a complete contradiction to modern living. <laughs> That's a good observation. It's a complete contradiction. Once again, this is why we're going through what we're going through, because we're here as conscious creatures to be consciously creating. And we're not consciously creating. We're consciously wrecking, if anything. But... Uh, we're not creating consciously, it's all a subconscious thing. But it's sort of a joy and and uh, joy is, yeah, you can't pursue it, it's there. The, uh, there is joy in being, just in being, not being anything, not doing anything, just being. And if you notice, today's humanity is very little time being, Let's take a hundred percent, half a percent, half of one percent for being, and ninety-nine and a half percent for doing. And that doing is looking for happiness where the half percent holds it. That is happiness in being. That is joy in being. And so everybody looks in the wrong direction and seeks pleasure. And um, but and then it gets to an extreme like base jumping. You know, my one of my sons was a jumper, and he, after about 1,500 jumps, he said, there's no adrenaline anymore, there's no rush. You just jump, and it's good, and it's fun, and it's nice. But he said, then there are those who have, are addicted to the adrenaline rush, and many of them become j j base jumpers. So they jump off cliffs and skyscrapers, and there's always a serious, strong element of danger. Adrian quit. He said, I'm not going there. He said, I'd rather enjoy my life. Um, but that, then they're, what, they're seeking something. And um, I said to Adrian, does it make them happy? And he said, they claim it does. You know, one guy said, I'm never happier than when he is hurtling down, pulling the chute at the last moment. And you begin to wonder then how, how corrupted the word happiness becomes. I, I because think it, that is an... Yeah, I agree. That's an adrenaline rush, a huge adrenaline rush. And I don't think that's what happiness is at all. And I think it needs a certain level of maturity to get to that point where you feel like that series of adrenaline rushes in my life that I get through the pursuit of whatever it is, is not what I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah, I think, well, let's face it. You know, we've been, I noticed just the other day, they've discovered um, some bones in Africa, some of the bones they discovered in Africa. They now realize you're a million, a million years older than they thought they were. Wow. A I million. Our time is because over. They, 
Okay, technology has increased. And uh, we've been around a long time playing this game and still looking to be happy. Time for a change. Time for a change. We're getting it. I'm looking forward for the moment what I would call the great reveal. And then you could, wherever you, could you are... Take, you could almost take the, the book cover of The Great Reset, just strike through the last couple of uh, letters and just... Reveal. Just V-E-A-L. The Great Reveal. Keep your head down then when you're in Florida. Okay. It's, it's going to be a wild place, America. I'm going to be okay. And, you know over 40% of Americans believe there will be a civil war. Yeah, I heard that, yeah. And that's a bit scary. <clears throat> Amazing. Okay, so this is all, the recording stopped, I take it. Good. No, not, not yet. So thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you've been enjoying this conversation as much as we have. And uh, if you if find... You like, if you have things that you would like us to discuss, send them in to Sasha or Yeah, Martin. you can just comment below that video, and we're reviewing those comments. Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the like button and all the things... Uh, share the video, share the, the channel with others if you find it useful. And uh, looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Sasha.